Great Wall of China, proof that with enough effort and resolve, mankind can achieve great things. In 2007, a group of dedicated individuals set off along the wall to raise money and awareness for a cause they are so impassioned about. I first heard about um, bear bile farming several years ago and the thought of it has haunted me ever since. Um, thinking of those bears and all the pain and fear that they suffer for years on end is just, well, as I say, haunting. The bears, referred to as bile bears, are Asiatic black bears, also known as moon bears, because of the large cream-coloured crescent on their chests. Despite being on the endangered species list, some are still taken from the hills and mountains of East and Southern Asia and then caged, and many are bred in captivity, born into a life of agony and torture. What really upsets me and makes me so angry is the torture of these poor bears. Um, it's not for like five minutes or five hours, it can be up to 20 years every day. I don't know how they take the suffering, you know, most species were just curled up and died long before. These forgiving little animals um, just keep going. Perhaps they have a little scrap of hope that maybe, maybe one day they'll get out of the cages, I'm not sure. The reason for this imprisonment is so that bile can be extracted twice daily from the bear's gallbladder for use in traditional Chinese medicine. The method of extraction is barbaric. A metal catheter or rubber tube is inserted via a crude incision through the abdomen and into their gallbladders. They wear an extremely heavy and tight metal jacket for years, which has a compartment that catches the bile. Obviously, they're no painkillers. I mean, why would they spend money on that? It's just stuck there and it's left there. And there it stays until the bear's supply of bile runs out, which unfortunately for these stoic animals can be a long time. It's unimaginable what they're going through. You think of all the things you've done in the last 10, 15, 25 years. Some of those bears have been in that cage for that long. It's the most hideous thing you can think of. They've got these cages called crush cages, which have got like a huge screw on the top and they screw it down, which actually pushes the bear down and crushes it down into an immobile position so that they can extract um, the bile. Some of the cages are so small they restrict the growth of the animal. This poor soul, now thankfully rescued, is the third of the size it should be due to years of confinement. Unfortunately, the bear bile industry is a lucrative business. A milliliter of bile can fetch two to three times what for many in Asia is a week's salary. I think it's inexplicable. There's so many more and better herbs and synthetic medicines that can do the same job. The medicine practitioners want to show that they're against bear farming and, and the use of bear bile and gradually more and more people now within the medicine industry are, st are stepping forward. The physical agony does not stop with the catheter. Their teeth and claws are usually pulled out to ensure the farmer's safety when milking or the bear itself will break them trying to escape, and injuries such as lost limbs from bear traps go untreated. Due to mental illness caused from years of abuse, self-mutilation is not uncommon. Bears gnaw away their own claws and rub away parts of their body and face on the bars of their cage. It's hard to believe families will come to these farms for a day out. I can't judge people for, for treating animals differently to the way that we do here in the West, but I think it's crazy that People take their families on buses to the Balbear farms as though it's Disneyland and as a tourist attraction. It was whilst posing as a tourist that Jill Robinson managed to sneak away and photograph some of these desperate incarcerated animals and expose this cruel practice to the rest of the world. Nobody in the West in particular had seen that before. Um, and so those photos then went around the world and, and it started to highlight the plight of these bears and, and what was actually happening. Jill went on to create the Animals Asia Foundation, dedicating her life to change attitudes towards animal cruelty in the East. Animal welfare as a concept was an alien concept for, for, you know, for, for hundreds of years, and now we've got support from all over China, within the government and you know, the people of China as well, in terms of starting to close these farms down. This one can move his cage. With a dedicated team behind her, Jill has so far managed to secure the release of nearly 300 bears. It can be a harrowing ordeal for both bear and rescuer. This particular large bear was squeezed so tightly into its tiny cage that it had to be cut out and examined urgently.
And the bears arrive, they go into a quarantine, they go through surgery to fix all the abdominal problems and a lot of the bears have their teeth removed and their claws are removed. So they have all kinds of surgical issues. Once they've gone through all the rehabilitation process, and that can take anything from nine months to two years really before the bears fully recover, um, then they can then go re be released with all the other bears, the happy, playful bears. And, and that is just a wonderful thing because the, these bears, which have been through so much in their lives, get the chance to start to express themselves. For Jill and her team at the sanctuary, the rewards of freeing an animal from its life of suffering is well worth the effort. And their example has been an inspiration to many in the West and in the East. Uh, support is definitely growing here in the UK, but I believe worldwide as well. Here in the UK, I mean, there's lots that people can do. Um, tell people about the bears, show them the DVD, sell some of the merchandise, help people to, you know, raise a bit of money as well for the bears and just have a really good, fun day. The whole rescue centre costs us millions of pounds each year and so we need a, a huge amount of money and, and basically the one thing that we need is for people to raise awareness and, and for people to fundraise. With the knowledge of what Animals Asia Foundation is trying to achieve, these inspired animal lovers took on the challenge of raising £2,500 each by trekking for the bears along the Great Wall. But were they prepared for the challenge?